Hello everyone, it's Jaren with NCSI coming to you once again with another Avanti Endpoint Manager video. Today I'm talking about the vulnerability recently discovered in Endpoint Manager. I'm going to uh, walk through how to mitigate this uh, particular vulnerability. I have a link here. This link will be in the video description. Please know that you must have an Avanti account in order to access this link. We have a few questions and answers in this article. Uh, I won't bore you by reading them. I will come down and talk about the hotfixes here. So uh, you can see these have been tested. The versions should be applied only to EPM 2022 SU3 or EPM 2021.1 SU4. If you have EPM 2020, these patches will not work for you. If you have 2022 SU1 or SU2, these patches will not work for you. You need to get up to either EPM 2022 SU3 or SU4 on 2021. In my lab, I have EPM 2022, so I'm going to download that. I've already taken the liberty of downloading it and extracting it, and you'll see here I have two DLL files. Following the instructions, we need to stop IIS, so I'm going to come in here to my elevated command prompt, I, I, oops, IIS reset space forward slash stop. All right, my services have stopped. Here are my downloaded files, my two DLLs. I'm going to navigate to the first one. Um, this is my management suite folder. Mine happens to reside on the C drive. If yours is on the E drive or the D drive or the F drive or whatever, uh, make sure that you're just drilling down into management suite. This is the file that we need to replace, landes.managementsuite.selfelectionbiz.dll. If I right click on that, go to properties, and then the details tab, you can see we've got a date modified from last September and I have a version of 11.05.10.19. Uh, so this is the version that is vulnerable. So what I'm going to do is I've got my new file here. Before I, re I replace it, I'm actually going to back this one up. And for me, I'm just gonna put a .old extension on it. <clears throat> you can put a .back, you can move it to another folder, whatever you'd like. It's just recommended to keep them in case you need to roll back for whatever reason. Now I'm going to copy my file into this folder. And there it is. Landes.managementsuite.selfelectionbiz.dll. And if I go to properties, um, I need to unblock it first. So I'm going to hit unblock there. And then if I look at details, I'm 11.05.18.24. So this is a newer version, has today's date as the modify date. I know that this is the new file and I am good. So I'm gonna hit apply and okay. I'm going to do the same thing for the remote control auth. That one is found in the remote control folder. Auth and then bin. And there's my remote control auth.dll. Same thing, I'm gonna look at properties, see the details. This one is 1574. So I am going to rename it to dot old. I will copy in the new one. Make sure you go into properties and unblock them. And then if I look at details, this is also 11.05.18.24. So I'll hit, apply, I'll hit apply and then hit OK. And now my two files, <coughs> excuse me, have been replaced. Now I can IIS start, IIS restart, or sorry, IIS reset start. And now my services are running and I want to double check that remote control still works by just remote controlling one of my clients. And there we go. Remote control still functions and I am no longer vulnerable to that vulnerability. I have heard of some customers who need to completely remove the backups from this directory in order for it to work. They were getting some error logs that mentioned the .old or the .back 
extension. So if you do have problems after this, give that a try. Take these, uh, get them out of the folders, put them in a, in a, in a backup folder far away, and then uh, restart those services again. But that is how you mitigate against CVE 2022-28-323. If you have any questions, please reach out. You can contact us through our website at ncsi.us, and uh, we'll be there if you need us. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.